A second way is war with parts of the world. And this is what many idealistic people do. When I was in graduate school, I studied social movements for my thesis. And what the research said is social movements are almost always defined by an enemy. They're at war with something. I studied the prohibition movement and I found a lot of research that suggests that they viewed the world as a war. But it wasn't quite as intense as some other people. It was just parts of it. They built coalitions and they find their enemies and they get people surrounded by them. People like Stephen Covey say it's good to be principle-centered, not enemy-centered. And many social movements, many political people, in fact, the vast majority of them, are motivated by enemies. And they do have enemies and they are at war. The question is, what parts of the world are they at war with? How much of the world are they at war with? If you are at war with parts of the world, you can assure yourself some success. If you truly want to win a war, then you'll build coalitions. You will work with other people. If you're not suicidal, you're going to find ways to succeed. And you don't want to wage war against the whole world which is what people like Westboro Baptist Church does. I don't think they seriously are trying to rid the world of sodomy. Of course, that is a very difficult goal. If they truly wanted to stop gay marriage, they wouldn't call everyone a gay enabler. When I study social movements, one of the biggest things is how you define your enemies. And people like Westboro Baptist Church, and like I have done in the past, is define your enemies in such a way that you make everyone your enemy. If you're so rigid and you're so extreme in your view of the world, if you're so black or white, you're going to see everyone as your enemy and therefore you're not going to gain any footing. You're not going to gain any leverage. The war is with the whole world and that's an unwinnable war. The people who have war with parts of the world can win because they are willing to get together with other people. If you're concerned more with purity than with gaining allies, you're going to be in a terrible position. And the best approach is synthesis integration. It's combining these ideals with the real world. And that's what many of these motivational speakers do. The best motivational speakers are not people who have abandoned all great ideals, noble morality, but instead they found a way to use the real world and the real world is beautiful. Alone is not beautiful, but it's the best of both worlds because you have the best of idealism and the best of practicality. The world is enticing and hopefully Westboro Baptist Church members will see that and want to embrace it more.